there were two things that I was thinking about in, in first of all, uh, I was looking at sort of some climate denial stuff on, yeah. on the web today. And, and it sort of struck me in looking after all at all of it, that in some ways, you know, whether the climate is changing or not is in many ways beside the point. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it is changing makes this very urgent, but the real question that it all poses is what do we live for? You know, like, why are we alive? Yeah. And, and then the second question, you know, that, that's sort of related to that is that it, it sort of struck me that as human beings, we all have sort of an innate desire to fill ourselves with something, right? And, and so the question is, what do we want to fill ourselves with? And, and then the related question is, you know, sort of if we fill ourselves with the wrong things, how do we make the transition to filling ourselves with God? With God and the right thing. And the right things. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. that's really all a good question, Ron. So the, the, so the, 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 the second question in a lot of ways reminds me of, you know, sort of St. Gregory and yeah. his, his, um, his exegesis of, of the uh, tree of life and the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. He argued that they're, that in, in Genesis, and it's, they're both described as being at the center of the garden. And since the center can only be one point, he argues that they're the same tree. There, is, there are not two different trees. The tree of life is the same tree as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. oh. So the difference is that, that uh, the, the attitude of the person approaching the tree uh -huh. determines whether you receive life from it or whether it brings death. Oh, so th that's his argument. But I can the, see that. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, I, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. So, yeah, it makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. So in some ways, you know, that's what we're in in many ways, I think, talking about here. You know, so people, human beings, naturally desire to be filled with something. And so the tree of life offers, you know, you to be filled with God, right? God created all things. You can live in harmony with God. You can live in harmony with, with your fellow humankind. You can live in harmony with the creatures that surround you. You can live in harmony with God's creation. You can see God's hand in all things. You can praise and give glory to God. Or you can do something else. And, and you know, in our society, the something else is that you can consume stuff, you can amass stuff, you can imagine that you yourself are, you know, sort of at the center of your universe. You can imagine that by your desires. You know, you create the world around you. You can imagine, you know, that you have this kind of autonomy and this sort of separation from everything around you that allows you to look at everything around you as uh, an object for your exploitation. And that is profoundly a culture of death. Hmm. That's you know, and so so whenever you whenever you fill yourself up of you want more of right yeah the irony when you fill yourself with God the irony is 
that the more you give away, the more you give away, the more you get, the mm -hmm. more you're filled. Mm -hmm. It's not even that you, you know, it's not even you get stuff, it's that you get an inner peace, Joy. it's that you yeah. get a, a recognition that God, of the goodness and the glory of God mm -hmm. that transcends all of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you know, the other way, when you fill yourself up with stuff, in order to be satisfied, you need more stuff. You need more, yeah. It yeah. just, I mean, because you're really not filled with anything. All of that stuff is... Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes so that comes more. with age, right? That, what? Sometimes that comes with age, though, that you realize what where the happiness is there you know it's like it's it's when you fill yourself up with all this stuff it, it right. just doesn't get you anywhere yeah right i mean it, it is it is true that many people kind of recognize the emptiness of of the stuff so i mean you know, you but it see, takes a lifetime sometimes to realize it. And you, you know, you frequently, or not infrequently, see people who, like, say, are very successful in corporate America, just you know, walking away and saying, you know, I can't do this anymore. Um, but so that happens. But it happens probably all too rarely. Yeah. So, and this so is the, where, uh, you know, where uh, when people is very unhappy and they don't know what you know what makes them happy, and then they uh, sometimes they kill themselves. You know, they they think it's the end of the world for them. Right. That's the way they think. You know what? Right. I'm happy or I don't right? Know, yeah. I mean the the. Yeah. The problem is that when you when you seek when when you seek happiness apart from God or joy apart from God, I mean there's a constantly insatiable desire, and where are you going to get it from? And and particularly, you know, for many people it's simply unattainable. You know, I mean, people yeah. who are, I mean, we live in a society, you know, based on conspicuous consumption, and you know, in which you're supposed to have stuff. So what happens if you can't have stuff? Well, yeah, you have to have money. That, too, to have that, stuff. that means, <laughs> well, in, in some ways, that means, you know, you've failed. Yeah. And, and, and so. But today's standards. Yeah. By today's standards, by but to, not by, always. Yeah. No, but but you know, I mean, it does mean by today's standards you failed. And, yeah. And, and exactly, you know, what that means, what the extent of that failure means is going to, you know, sort of differ by person. But for many pers people, it means you're worthless. Mm -hmm. So if you're worthless, where do you find meaning? And so mm -hmm. drugs are a good place to find meaning. And it's not only poverty, it's all kinds of other stuff. I mean, just... But, but, but remember all these uh, uh, these people that's very successful. In, uh, remember Mike, Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley, and remember Robin, Robin Williams. Do you know Robin Williams? Right. Okay. And we didn't know because he's always uh, happy on, his, on all the movies that he made, right? Well, when he, when he killed himself, uh, they said he was in depression for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell. Right. So he, he because they hide it. They yeah. hide it. Yeah. yeah, he got all this money and fame. So, and then all of a sudden, he's not happy with it. I mean, you know. Right. He finally killed himself. It's really sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah. And then, you know, even... Suicide, I mean, on the one hand, I mean, suicide is, you know, obviously very tragic, but in many yeah. ways, it's also, you know, sort of a, an expression of the problem 
because it's in some sense a supreme act of egotism. Yeah. I Not think, always. I think I think it's just a it's it's a uh, means of escape for them. You know? I was down at the bottom once and and I I just felt so worthless. Yeah. And that was the first time that I knew that my husband was cheating on me and and I just that was it. I mean, that was my world, you know. I, I lived to to have a fa family, to be fa you know, happy with a family and the, a marriage. And when I felt that that was gone, right? That's yeah. yeah that's that's true. Yeah. yeah. So it it hits you so fast, and then God steps in the way and says, "What are you doing? What do you think you're doing?" Yeah. <laughs> And then you go, okay, God, okay. If you have other plans, then tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I mean, you but came out of it because you have God. I came out of it because you have God with you. I thought, right. I yeah, I didn't. I it opened my eyes. Yeah. You know that you're not alone. Yeah. And I hear your your grief. You know. So, I I. Yeah, I, I didn't feel that it was an egotistical thing. I, I just felt like I was worthless. I felt I felt like I hit the bottom of mm -hmm. the bottom. I mean, yeah. you know, it, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the problem is, I mean, it's egotistical to the extent that it, you know, sort of ignores that well, you have to close the door. But God was number one in my life at that time. Right. So. But also, you know, it, it ignores that other people, whether you see it or not, or whether you, you know, kind of feel it or, or not, care about you. And so, you know, sort of taking your own life well, profoundly, that's, yeah. profoundly hurts those around you. And, and in that yeah. sense, you know, it in many ways is a very very selfish act, but but you, but know, you don't problem, realize that when you don't know that's at true. That you, don't, time. You, yeah. you you generally don't do it to get back at people, although sometimes that does happen. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, when I got out of that, I thought, what was I thinking? He was gonna have the kids, <laughs> he was gonna have the kids, he was having his girlfriend. <laughs> And, and I wouldn't be around to to be careful, you know, to to walk my kids through that, you know. Yeah. I just felt like a failure is what I felt like. Right. Right. So yeah. But but yeah, your emotions do take over. Yeah, and it's you know sort of a, a failure to see relationships. Yeah. Um, and you know, sort of a putting yourself in a center, disconnected from everything else around you, and focusing on that. And in that sense, you know, it's kind of egotistical. I mean, it's you know, it's simply misplaced that yeah, you know, you focus on yourself to the exclusion. And and yeah, and, but I mean, it's also true that in the context, it's often. It's very difficult to not do that mm. unless you have, you know, some strong support from elsewhere. Mm. Mm. Certainly God is a strong support, a church community is a strong mm. support or can be a strong support. Yeah. And, and that's what opened my eyes was that I, I had not taken that part of my life seriously. Yeah. So. But he gives you strength, you know, and for some reason he gave me a second chance. So, <laughs> yeah, you know. Always. Well, God Always is the God of second chances. Yeah. <laughs> He, I was blessed. Not, I wasn't that smart to, to know how to not, do it. Not now. only second chances, he gives <laughs> us third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Yeah. Um, as many as you can. As many as, as, many. Uh, as we need yeah. until we, we yeah. uh, 
we die. Yeah. Each day is a new beginning. Yeah. And and a new opportunity for receiving God's grace and God's mercy, which is boundless. Mm -hmm. So then the question sort of becomes how so for so we have in many ways you know a world that is consumed with consumption consumed with consuming one another i mean if you sort of look at it that's you know in part what this yeah. is all about we we consume one another we consume things in the world around us we look at objects as if they're simply there for our exploitation to varying degrees and in an extreme case we do this with everything you know our spouses are these objects that make us look good. Our children are these things through which we derive vicarious pleasure, right? So my son got into Harvard. That's, you know, a real reflection yeah. of Ivy League, yeah. How great I am. <laughs> and, you know, the basic humanity of everything, of everyone around you is of no consequence. The, there, you know, everybody is evaluated from sort of a pragmatic and, and, you know, sort of utilitarian point of view of how do I look and what's good for me and what do I get out of this? So the question then is, so given that that, and, and the problem also is that that attitude also is found very commonly in the church. It's not like it's, you know, the church, it doesn't exist in the church and, you know, the world is separate. It's very much a part of the church. So then, so then the question is, how do you make so the, the, the chapter talks about uh, the, the one section of the chapter um, starting in paragraph 209 and it talks about education and then the paragraph starting with 216 talks about ecological conversion. So, and the question is, given that large portions of the church and our world culture as a whole focuses on filling yourself with fundamentally meaningless stuff, or, you know, to sort of contrast it, Jesus tells us that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. So recognizing that we do need bread and do live by bre with bread, by bread. Nevertheless, the important thing is the words that come forth from the mouth of God. So in, in contrast, um, to that we have man lives not only by bread alone, but by his house, children, in the case of a man, wife, automobiles, uh, electronic equipment, and cell phone. From I which, not and if, from, <laughs> if, if, you're, if, if you're Christian, uh, you can append to that from which one can hear the, the, the word of God. <laughs> they use the phone now for, you know, for, for the readings. Yeah. You see all those people, you know, sitting in the pew, watching the phone for the reading. 
Oh um, yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what they do. They 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 watch the reading from there. Why don't they listen to the lecture? <laughs> I know. Right, and there's a missile right in front yeah. of you. I mean, you could open that up. Well, even so, you know the 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 uh, you know sort of the, the theology of the mass holds that the God is merely is that the, the lector is merely a person whose voice is being used, and through the yeah. lector, God is speaking. Exactly. So that, and that's what you know, traditionally, in in you know before. Uh, printed Bibles were readily available, you know, which happened in the 16th century with Gutenberg. You know, the major means of hearing the Mass, of, of hearing, of, of accessing the Word of God was orally. And, you know, the, yeah. the reality is that people did, did very well with it. You know, many yeah. people were extremely well acquainted with the word of God, despite not being able to read or despite not having access to a Bible. That, and, and so, I don't know, you know, it's sort of like something is lost if, you know, you're following along. Why don't you just listen and kind of, it's like this, it's, it's this layer of busyness, you know, like just sit back, listen to the word of God, let the Holy yeah. Spirit penetrate you and and you know give up the busyness. Get, like, get consumed with that word, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Get consumed <laughs> with it. Yeah, with the word of God. Yeah. Right. Right. That's what yeah, that's what happened to me yesterday after reading after the reading in the homely man. That was very moving. I and mean, I don't know. I don't know other people, but <laughs> You know, just it, it, and, and you know what? Sometimes if you have a let's say you have a problem, right? You you you're praying to God, mm -hmm. and then this this happens to me all the time. And then uh, and then the you know the reading for the day. Oh my God, that's it, it jumps out at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, thank you, Lord. Like you're the only one in the room. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's your message. That's your answer to me. You know, that happens all the time to me. It was that was really something when that happens to you. You pray for something, and then all of a sudden, in the reading, you know, it was like that's that's for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that I think that's why it's worded the way it is because it can be, yeah, almost anything in your life. Right. Yeah that you can relate to, yeah. you know? I remember, I mean, when I started coming back, a lot of what they said, yeah, but they whoa, said, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you, you look around to see if anybody's <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I always try to sit in front, so it's harder to look <laughs> around. Yeah, me too. I always sit in well, front. Well, you try to be inconspicuous when you're first coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and there's enough people in there that you think that you, you kind of meld in with everybody. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to see uh, behind you when you're sitting in the front. Uh -huh. that's, why wanna, I, that's why I want to sit in the front too, so I don't see any people not listening or something. <laughs> yeah, I think for the most uh, people that goes to church, they don't really know exactly, you know, how the mass works. You know, the I don't know, they just probably be there because it's an obligation. You know, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. No, uh, yeah, I, that, that's true. I think that, uh, you know, I mean, the, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, most Catholics ultimately don't even know what the Mass is about. It's kind right. of like, exactly. yeah. you go and you, you, you participate, you don't participate. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you're there in body, there. but not in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. And, and the, the, the sort of bizarre thing is that all you really have to do is listen. I mean, it's yeah. not like they're, they're I mean. There's, there's so much to learn by listening. <laughs> there, there's a great deal of richness, but, yeah. but at least at a, much of the ri richness is on the surface. Yeah. All you have to do is listen to the Eucharistic prayer and you know you can kind of figure out what's going on here. Exactly. But, but evidently, you know, people don't even do that often. So sort of so given that, given that in some sense we have really a clash of, I guess you could say a clash of two cultures, but a clash of uh, what what feeds us does God feed us and the things of God or just the world feed us and and given that for much of the church it's also true that the world feeds us and so you know simply going to mass because you have to yeah. is a good reflection of that right I guess I would say the following along with the readings on your cell phone is a good reflection yeah. <laughs> of that um yeah, just listen. There are all kinds of, you know, sort of theological um, departures that, you know, are a reflection of that. There's, you know, sort of this, uh, uh, a rigidity that, you know, sort of results in, you know, sort of a commitment to tradition, which we discussed last week, you know, sort of the form of the Latin mass, yeah. a sort of rigid kind of morality that's harsh and judgmental. It's also a reflection of that. You know, th there are all sorts of, of uh, within the church, there are all sorts of you know, sort of factors that make the church as much a part of the world culture as, or, you know, as conformed to the world as the world mm -hmm. is conformed to the world. Mm -hmm. And so the question, how do, how do we, so he, he talks about the, the ecological spirituality and education. So the question then is how, do we make a transition from, you know, the sort of tendency to conform to the world to attend to a desire to focus on God? Which is a, a hard question, but does anyone have any any insights or thoughts about that? So, so what's the question? Well, given that both within and outside of the church, you know, basically world culture, or <clears throat> you could even call it American culture, given that it, you know, American culture predominates consumerism and throughout the world. Yeah in varying ways yeah we have, we reflect everything on the world yeah yeah uh given that you know american culture predominates both inside and outside of the church how do you make that that transition so you know as long as as you know american culture or world culture or material culture whatever we choose to call it predominates the world around us, I mean, that's a very anthropocentric view, right? And, and so as long as that culture predominates, everything around us is an object for exploitation, yeah. right? Including each other, because that's the essence of anthropocentrism. And um, so then the question is, given that as long as that culture is in place, Our Earth is in danger. Yeah, and how we, how do we change? And that? so then, how do we break out of it? How do we, you know, bring so? 
you know, the Holy Father argues that we, we have to not only adopt solutions, but the fundamental challenge is that we have to bring about an inner, <clears throat> an inner conversion because unless there's an inner conversion, there are only going to be rules. You know, it's very much like contrasting the Old and the New Testament and, you know, using Jeremiah and using Paul's argument about the Israelites as slaves that, you know, the rules, God's law was imposed on them externally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they had to do stuff and much of it was unwilling and they didn't, mm -hmm. right? Instead, they resorted to idolatry because those God's law was completely external had nothing to do with them, was imposed on them, as opposed to, you know, following Jeremiah, the, uh, and also Paul in a slightly different way, God's law is to be written in our hearts, or for Paul, through Christ, we become sons and daughters of God, and so God's law it's no longer external to us. It's now internal to us. We're children of the Most High God, and therefore, you know, we we share God's, um, if you can call it that, you know, morality and 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 ethics, and God's law now becomes internal to us, not external to us. It's no longer imposed. It's who we are because we're sons and daughters. So, so the question then, you know, is how do you make that transition? Wow, that's really hard. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah. That's that's it's not until we get older that we can make any kind of an impact. Well, one of the things he does talk about is small steps you know so education yeah so they, small think. things like turning down the heat yeah mm -hmm. in winter wearing warmer clothes more layers more yeah more yeah. layers less heat turning off the lights when you leave a room oh yeah you do that all the time don't do don't too. buy more food than you can consume Exactly. Yeah. And the, you know, in, in, in many cases, you know, the extent of waste ju well, just profoundly bothers me. I mean, I, 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 um, we, we I try have, to waste absolutely nothing. Yeah. We, we, we can start, you know, like, like start from us, right? Mm -hmm. Our family. Uh, the whole issue of, of waste and yeah. uh, food is discardable um, is really disgraceful, especially mm -hmm. both given the uh, number of people in need yeah. and also just the fact you know, that what it reflects about us, you know, that, that you yeah. know, if I can't use it, yeah. Just well, throw it away. I don't know That's, how you change that. No. Well, Unless they change the rules. That's the only way. You know. But then well, he, yeah. he, I mean, he also in mentions, you know, sort of local associations and local organizations to put political pressure on corporations and political parties. Um, you know, and you know that that's been you know to it's it's been fairly effective, you know, in terms of at least some corporations have you know pledged to reduce or completely eliminate their carbon to have a zero carbon impact by whenever, and, and you know those are. That kind of pressure is really significant and, you know, it works. Although, you know, at a political level and 
in America at this point, we're also you know, seeing the opposite political pressure where you know, there's a pressure to disenfranchise people. There's, there's a pressure to, to limit the voice of the electorate to predominantly you know, white people. There's an attempt to disenfranchise people of color. Um, and you know, so there's, uh, you know, within our country, clearly a growing drift toward fascism. Yeah. Um, um, God help us. A portion of, uh, of uh, our political leadership supported by you know, white America. So at a political level, that's likely to be a mixed bag for a while. Even the, even the, the, back, the vaccine they're talking about, don't politicize it, you know? Make it like a, like a coordination between people, people, state, you know, the citizens. Not, not become you know politician involved in it or you know to I know to better themselves you know oh yeah we're ordering these billions of bucks you know something like that you know it's me that did that you know stuff like that you know just yeah yeah when people make a comment saying yeah they, they make a comment saying you can't make me what what is it you can't you can't make me take the vaccine and and you know, I don't know. And the, the problem is that the you know the vaccine has already been politicized. I mean, it was I know it was well, politicized. It's my right, if I don't want that. from the very beginning, it's, it's, it's the same. You know, I mean, it's the same thing as COVID. COVID is a hoax. Yeah, COVID yeah. is. Um, God. Yeah, and wearing masks, people. You Masks know. are unnecessary. Scott Atlas will take wear us on. to the next level. Oh, I have uh, my rights. I don't have to wear a mask. <laughs> right, I have my rights, right. Yeah. What does so, it right. have to do with your rights? This doesn't have anything to do with your rights. This if God wants to take me, he will. For yeah. your protection. You know? exactly. For the protection of you and your, the, uh, your, uh, and you the know, people you, around you. Other people right. around you, exactly. I mean, when, when uh, I first saw a person wear mask was not anywhere near COVID, that was many years ago. And I was in Japan and some lady was wearing a mask. And I, I said to Lloyd, I said, why is that lady wearing a mask? And he says, she probably has a cold and she doesn't want to spread it. Yeah. Said, that's wow, yeah. that's so yeah. respectful of everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. It's um, common decency, you yeah. know? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's common decency, but yeah, but um, but how beautiful, you know, that she she was that that um, respectful of everybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. So the people don't look at it that way. You know, so the issue is we care about ourselves. And yes. And look out for number one is, you know, a fundamental principle. So how do you make the transition from looking out to number one? I mean, the reality is that looking out for number one <laughs> is very successful. But as uh, a mother, I don't feel I ever was taking care of myself. I was taking care of my kids and my family before myself. I was always the last that you think of. Exactly. When you buy mother. stuff yeah. for clothes are like kids, that. Yeah. People, I'm the last one I bought stuff for. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But that's the way my mother was too. You know, when you had five kids, you don't think about yourself, you think about your family. Right. Yeah. My and parents. I don't, my I don't parents know as that, well. Yeah. So I, I think family needs to come back as number one again because now, right now, family doesn't mean very much. 
I mean, no. to us it does, but but in general, you know, anybody can be a family, you know. But to, now the Holy Father really has, emphasizes the family as a vehicle for, you know, education and instilling values, but the family has really in many ways broken down mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. sense. I mean, people, you know, I mean, families typically don't eat together anymore. No, no, sharing, we our lives with so much stuff. Sharing meals is, you know, a really important uh, means of communication, communication mm -hmm. and building relationships. Mm -hmm. and, and so when that doesn't happen, I mean, and, and for a family, that's really the major, mm -hmm. you know, time that you can get together, share a meal and talk mm -hmm. and interact with one another. And when that doesn't happen, then, you know, the, the opportunities, you know, outside of that become strictly limited and, and mm -hmm. Um, so, and, you know, yeah, and, and unfortunately, yeah, and many of us at this point live through our cell phones. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the family has really. Um, well, and, and, and also even just respect for the elders. It used to be that you looked up to your parents for answers about things. Now nobody goes to your parents. Everybody can find it on the internet or they, they have the answers before we do. <laughs> I, we don't even get asked anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, whereas I, I hear my mother and she talks about her father and how he used to have certain sayings about life and, you know, and, and every time she does that, I think I can't see my kids doing that. You know, I can't see my kids looking up and saying, oh, my mother used to say this all the time, you know, because we don't have the same kind of life anymore. We're just not around our kids as much as they were, you know. And plus, we're in a different. We're in a more technological lifestyle, you know, where where technology kind of took over. Mm hmm. Yes, technology did take over. Yeah. It. Um... But did you see people in the restaurant, family eating or friends? They're not talking to each other. No. <laughs> Their cell phone, you know, they're just. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. How sad. Oh my gosh. Well, it's not that sad because sometimes they're texting one another. <laughs> That's real sad. <laughs> it's like they're in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, I mean, a corollary of that, our ability to communicate is breaking down. You know the and the ability to think. You know, I mean, yeah. The 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 the. Um, I mean, one of the things I found most, I don't know, shocking, frightening about Trump was that, you know, his major form of communication was Twitter. I I know. You know I what can you say of of meaning? You know, in however many words you have yeah. for. For a tweet, what is that? You know what? You know, it's like like he, he tweets several times a day. You know, <laughs> all the time. But but yeah, you know, th there's there's no meaningful communication of any value, and and, and you know, right. of course, his communications were degrading I mean it's easy to degrade with uh, uh, with a small number of words it's easy to yes. humiliate it's easy to demean it's easy to point fun and poke fun at it's easy to you know uh, express 
racist, sexist, and, and whatever thoughts about throw racist barbs and sexist barbs at, and ethnocentric barbs at people with a small number of words. But it's not so easy to express anything that's at all complex, thoughtful, uh, or dignified. Mm -hmm. And so that's going out the window. Yeah. Instead of talking, there's texting. Yeah. People don't yeah. even like calling on the phone. Well, two days in a row, you're in the stop sign, right? Somebody's in front of you. It's green. You won't go. I have to honk my horn. This morning, the same way. The other days, the same way. You know, come on. The, the green is like, Light is not, it doesn't take very long, it's gonna change. And this guy in front of you is texting or yeah. on the phone. So I have to hunt my horn, I hate to do that. <laughs> they won't move, you know, I said, so this morning, this lady, you know, I hunt my horn, she finally moved and what she did, she spit out and uh, ran in front of this truck, you know, the SUV <gasps> without any signal at all. Change lane and went in there, I said, oh my God. You know, it's an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. You know? Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is terrible. So that's that's probably the one of the hardest thing to transition yourself is from you know from a phone to no phone. <laughs> or you know, I mean it's, it's fundamentally true that if you live in moderation, you know, we don't, it's not necessary to become a hermit. It's simply necessary yeah. to recognize that God is the source of the things around you and to use them in moderation mm -hmm. and, and, and respectfully. You know, the right. phone has, has, some major advantages as well as some major disadvantages. That's true, you know, fundamentally of everything yeah. that exists, everything, you know, that, uh, you know, yeah. a, uh, if, if you, you know, like steak, right? Yeah. Steak is good, but uh -huh. you can also overeat it grossly, right? And, and in that case, and eat too much of it and consistently do it and get your cholesterols out of whack and <laughs> gain weight. And so, you know, it can be lethal, uh, but it can be good. Yeah. But everything else, everything in God's creation, God has created all things good, but we can all misuse everything that God has created in his goodness and we do. Wait. I guess sort of go, we're close, we, we have about 12 minutes left, but I guess sort of the second question, maybe it was the first one I asked. So if, uh, so what if in fact there is no climate crisis? Does that matter? I don't think, I don't think it matters. Yeah. There's a climate change or not? For you know, for people that doesn't believe in it anyway, in the first place, right? So they're thinking of the matter. There's some people think, that are, yeah. There are elements of it, you know, that, that whether there you know, is a climate crisis that is threatening Earth or not, it's certainly true that we, um, you know, species are becoming extinct. Yeah. And the uh, Holy Father is correct that each species has a voice that God has given it, each species and each animal a voice and it's our carelessness, right? To speak to us. Mm -hmm. And when we silence it, we're in many ways silencing the voice of God. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a right to do that. So that's true. And, and also, you know, the beauty of God's creation is being 
you know, erode it. Do you remember, it, it, I think it was in the late, early 60s, there was a, a song, um, Pave Paradise and Put Up a Parking Lot. Mm -hmm. That's paradise and put up a parking lot. <laughs> yeah, that's that's in Joni many Mitchell. Ways. Joni what? Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. Yeah, she didn't write it. It, it actually was written. Oh, yeah. I, I, no, I don't remember who wrote it, but but they were a Christian group. Don't you always? What is it? Won't you? Doesn't no. Don't you always? Don't know when it's gone until it's gone. Yeah. Pave paradise and put up a parking lot. Yeah. Pave paradise and put up a parking yeah. lot. Yeah. So, but the really big question, I mean, underlying all of this is, you know, what do we live for? You know, do we live for our stuff? Or do we live for God? And, and in a lot of ways, so I mean, you know, he, he argues both explicitly and implicitly throughout here that Christianity has to provide, you know, the sort of morality and the spirituality and the ethics behind the movement to preserve our common home. And underlying that is really the issue of why why are we here and why, what are we here, why are we alive? And you know, the, 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 the climate change deniers and those who are kind of lukewarm really are saying that we live for, to consume, and we live for our stuff mm. and you know, we want to go on as we are. But whether the climate is changing or not, the basic fact is that this is a culture of death. You know, I mean, living for yourself mm -hmm. is a culture of death. I mean, the reality is people who live for themselves are going to help. I mean, that seems like a fairly clear conclusion. They can profess to believe in Jesus Christ or whatever, but it's meaningless because to love Christ, we also have to love our neighbor. And that means to love ourselves less. And I don't mean that in a strict sense. I mean, at the we don't locate ourselves at the center of the world. We locate God at the center of the world. And, and, and so instead of that, we have you know, this acquisition of stuff and God is going to bless me and God should pour out his blessings on me and, and it's all about me. <laughs> And that has nothing to do with God. God's role is not to bless me. God is God. God is transcendent. And, and it's just sort of very disturbing. So, I mean, it really is, you know, eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And, you know, very much like, you know, in the Genesis story and not taking, not being willing to take any responsibility to think that everything is about you, to think that everything revolves around you, to think that you're blameless. It's all everyone else's fault. When you see the poor, they're poor because it's their fault. They're poor because they don't want to work. They're poor because, I mean, it's on them, you know, other people around you don't really count because you know they're not like you. There's this me, me, me. And and so ultimately, whether the climate is changing or not doesn't matter. I mean, the road to hell is the road to hell. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, and I, I like the Catholic Church's viewpoint that we're all part of the body of Christ, or or we're the the part of the bride of Christ, mm -hmm. um, and that when one of us gets hurt, the whole body suffers. Right. Right. I, I, I mean, I I do like that part, but there's not many people that relate to the body of Christ or the bot uh, or the bride of Christ as a, a as part of the same family I mean we're all brothers and sisters of you know of Christ and and we should that's why we need to take care of each other mm -hmm. right but, yeah but I mean I it's a concept that not many people have Right. No. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the church is, as a community is, is really you know, very important. I mean, that's why really the Catholic Church is, and Greek Orthodox Church have mm -hmm. emphasized sort of community based churches as opposed to, you know, sort of the mega church model or of uh, evangelical churches where. You have all of these people, but but uh, yeah, but but right, you're right. Even so, not many people really realize it or particularly appreciate it, and um, and people think you know, many people, many Catholics see the church as just one this place where one has to go and. You know, so you know, form some relationships, and that's good. But it's not, you know, sort of central in 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 many ways. And that's, and and particularly, you know, there's sort of a sense of, um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, so you know, for me, I see the church as being my church. Not in the sense that you know I own it exclusively no, or anything, but you belong to this church. But, but I belong to the church, and I have a measure of responsibility for what goes on in the church. Mm -hmm. And I have a measure of responsibility for you know the people in the church, and I have a measure of responsibility for simply as a Catholic, I have a measure of responsibility for our faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, this mm -hmm. external thing. The church isn't this building, and mm -hmm. you know, the church is part of it's a family. It's a family. It's family. It's part of who I am. The faith yeah. is part of who I am. Yeah. So, so, you know, so you know, it, we all have to take ownership, not in the sense of you know, my possession, but in the sense yeah. of. You know, I'm responsible here. Mm -hmm. I have responsibility. I, I have to do my part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if, if everything you know, sort of goes to hell, that's going to be on me too. Mm -hmm. It's oh, it's not yeah. it's it, 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 I can't point to someone else and say, What have you done? <laughs> you know, the snake made me do it. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a worm in the law on the law that that uh, it's responsible. Nobody, nobody one takes responsibility. Abby forced me to. But I, I, I think I, I think the beauty of the Catholic Church also, you know, there's the sacraments and confession and and realizing that we're not perfect and 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 understanding understanding that we're part of a community and the only strength of this community is what we can all offer together and not right. and nobody's offering is any better or worse than anybody else's you know, we all try to do our best. Right. To, you know, to be there for one another 
through thick and thin. We're out of time. So next week we'll, I guess should probably be our last week, right? Yeah. So we'll finish discussing chapter six and discuss practically, you know, what we can do, some ideas for what we can do and possibly what we can do, you know, within the context of the church community as a whole. Right, yeah. Um, and see what good, good makes sense. And then we can uh, go over our list with Father Vu at some point and see yeah. what he is willing to, yeah. to do. And, and, uh, and, you know, so it'll be our last week. Okay.